What's good y'all and welcome to another video. Now if you're an iPhone 12 user, specifically the iPhone 12 Pro, you should be pretty excited. Apple just issued iOS 14.3, which is a good thing because there were some bugs that were really annoying. But Apple also included Apple Pro Raw in this update. Now if you're not a photographer, I'm gonna just explain it as simple as possible. Basically, Apple is combining their computational photography with raw image processing to allow greater details in the photo. And you can achieve these greater details by editing them. That's playing with your exposure, your highlights and your shadows, and your saturation. So the question becomes, how much of a difference does Apple Pro Raw make in regular iPhone photos? That's what we're gonna test. We're gonna take a few photos. Right now I'm outside freezing my ass off. It's like 30 degrees out here. And we're gonna take some photos and see if there's any greater preservation in the details, the highlights, and the shadows. going to notice a difference between the non-raw images and the Apple Pro raw images. You're going to look and you're going to be like, well, maybe this is a little different, but overall they look pretty similar. I would say the non-raw images have a little bit better dynamic range, like slightly, but overall you're really not going to be able to tell a difference. Where the difference is, is when you edit them, you know, when you open a photo editor. So. I love Visco, right? Visco is my primary and favorite photo editing app, but I don't think Visco fully supports Apple Pro Raw yet because when you upload those images, as soon as you try to edit them, they're out of focus and they're blurry. And I don't know what's up with that. And I'm having similar problems with Photoshop Express. So I don't think the mobile app support Pro Raw yet, but Apple's built-in editor in the gallery supports it. So from what I can see as of right now, that's your best way to edit Apple Pro Raw images, right? And I think it does a pretty damn good job. Like I think it's really impressive what Apple is doing because this is really unheard of. So I just wanted to see if there's a huge difference between the non-Pro Raw images and the Pro Raw images. So I took a few pictures. I wanted to get more, but it was freezing. If you're from New York, you know how cold it gets in December. So I really couldn't get that many shots for y'all. But we got a good sample size, right? So let's look at these two photos right here. For simplicity's sake, I'm only going to be editing the exposure and the saturation. Just keep it simple. And as you can see, the Pro Raw picture captures a lot more details in the shadows and the highlights. You can tell by just how dark it can get and how light it can get when you're editing them, right? And the same thing goes for saturation. As you can see of this picture, when you crank up the saturation all the way on the non-raw image, some of those colors start to distort. They start to look like different colors, like the colors right here. It's starting to look red when it's just orange. But as you can see on the pro raw image, a lot of that color detail is being preserved. So when you crank the saturation all the way to 100%, it's not distorting the colors, which is really impressive. And obviously you would never do that. You would never take it that far but it goes to show you how flexible you can edit these pictures because of how much information is being captured. So if you're not into photography, if you're not into photo editing, raw images are usually very flat. They lack contrast, they lack saturation, and you have to add those yourself. But with Apple Pro Raw, it's saving that dynamic range, it's saving that detail, and it's giving you the flexibility in post 
So again, you, normally you'd have to add these things, but it's saving you time by having these things already combined in the raw image, which is really impressive. And I think it's kind of hard to tell if this will, you know, make waves in the mobile photography game because there's a lot of people who are casual shooters. And if you are one of those people who just shoot casual pictures or whatever, you don't really photo edit, Pro Raw is not for you because you're not gonna notice any difference in the non-raw images versus the pro raw images. But if you're curious about photo editing, um, if you're into photography, obviously, I think it's gonna empower a lot of creators to create content that they normally wouldn't be able to do on a smartphone. That's the whole thing, right? Bridging the gap, making the gap smaller between an actual DSLR and a smartphone. And personally, I think Apple is doing a great job with features like this because a feature like this isn't on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. They don't have computational photography to preserve the details, the dynamic range, etc. So obviously this isn't better than a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, but it's all about empowering creators, right? Giving creators more tools instead of less. And again, I think with the power of Apple's triple camera on the iPhone 12 Pro, as well as the features that they've enabled, and of course their chipset which powers all of this. I think Apple's done a damn good job. All right, so if you're new to my channel, my name is D Dames and I make videos about tech and lifestyle. I'm from New York City, so my videos will always have a New York aesthetic and a New York feel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're new. Like, uh, I about to say subscribe. But again, like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'll be giving you guys the next one soon. I'm thinking probably a lifestyle video since I haven't updated one of those. I've been apartment searching um, actually. So I'm thinking about filming that process and I think that's gonna be a dope vibe, you know? So definitely let me know how you guys feel about an apartment video and I'll be giving you guys the next one soon. Super tired. <laughs> Deuce.